Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and since my country has joined the U.S., the U.K., and France in attempting to destroy Libya's infrastructure and kill Colonel Gaddafi, I decided I would read his book so that you'd know the thoughts of the man we're trying to kill. So, johntermel.com slash gaddafi.wmv is the whole book. This is part four of the excerpts dealing with economics. You might call this Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged, not versus Muammar Gaddafi's socialism. In a socialist society, it's inadmissible for an individual to receive more than what suffices his needs. Whoa, I want to suffice my wants if there's enough to go around. If a number of these individuals were to own more than their share of one unit, like me, I got a caddy worth two units, and he's got a little mini worth a half a unit, then certain other individuals in this society would own nothing, not nothing, less, because their shares of the society's wealth had been usurped by others. No, my share. I didn't usurp what I scored. It's mine. They getting it would be usurping my share. Not It's not their share. By me getting my share and earning it and winning more than them doesn't mean that that's unfair. Come on. This disparity creates the presence of the rich and the poor in exploitative society. No, it doesn't. Because Paul Corinthians 2 said, if you lend your spare without interest to the guy who's short, that's okay. It's usury that takes from the poor to give to the rich that's got to be stopped. The robbery, not the scoring honestly of more by the better producer, who will then lend to the weaker producer. Yes, what he can't use. But to take it from the richer producer to make him equal would eliminate the incentive you say you want to keep. Let us suppose that five individuals in this society own two units each. Then there are five others who own nothing. Well, yeah, if you have two units each, but if they own one and a half each or 1.2 or 1.3 and the other guys are 0 0.8 and 0 0.7, 0 0.9, a few above, a few below, a bell curve probably of better producers, weaker producers, Paul and Christ said, as long as your abundance supplies their want, nothing wrong with you being positive and rich. And Isaiah said, you who have no money, come and buy and eat, means they're allowed to go negative and buy my spare abundant seeds. And this means that half are deprived of their share of the wealth. No, I scored that wealth. That's my share, and they're not deprived of it, unless I won't lend them any. Because the additional units owned by each of the, one of the former five individuals represents the shares of the other five. And look at if five guys end up winning two and scoring two units of crops while the other five guys get rained out, agreed, we should live on one and lend them one. But we shouldn't give it to them. They should next time put it back if they score big and I score negative. When it, see, it's too egalitarian sometimes. Kind of, what kind of dictator wants to share too much? When an individual in this society requires only one unit of society's wealth to fulfill his needs, then the individual who owns more than one of this wealth is actually the usurper of the right of the other individuals in society. I might own it, but it doesn't mean I didn't lend it to him and he got to use it and survive so that later... Because I had a bad crop and he had a good one and he paid me back, he can have the satisfaction of knowing he didn't take charity. He took an interest-free loan and paid it back. By having a share in excess of his need, this individual is usurping this excess to hoard more than his share at the expense of others' needs. Hey, the only time I got more seeds than I can consume is when they don't need to borrow them. And I don't mind having more than the next guy when he doesn't need to borrow from me. You don't seem to anticipate a world of abundance. What are you going to do when you don't have people who are hungry and starving and everybody's doing okay? You're still going to want to take away from the higher achievers to equalize it out? Of course not. This explains the existence of those who hoard and those who spend. 
those who save in excess of what they require to fulfill their needs, and also the existence of those who are deprived, those who are demanding their right in society's wealth and have nothing to live by. Well, that's only because the extra seeds aren't loaned out, they're loaned sharked out. So don't throw out the baby with the bath water. There's nothing wrong with excellence and abundance in the hands of the winners as long as it's not hurting the losers. It is overt theft and plunder. No, it's not. If I score more than the next guy and he doesn't need it, I got a right to have more than the next guy. What is left over after fulfilling the needs of all individuals becomes the rightful property of all members of society. Well, all right. I'm saying that you, there's no need to take all the spare seeds and divide it out equally. You can actually let the high scorers keep their high scores and run an honest game as long as the losers don't have too little. And, of course, he wants everybody who produces more than they need to stick it in the central storage house and he divvies it up equally. And I want everybody who produces in excess of their needs to put it in a central storage house and get credit for it. While the guys who got a borrow go negative. With no penalty for going negative, And the attempt to put it back. Now that would generate excellence. Even the industrious and skillful have no right to usurp the share of others as a result of this advantage. Hey, if I'm industrious and the other guy isn't, I got a right to the extra share and have more by that advantage. I just don't have a right to have too much. They can use these talents to satisfy their own needs and save from those needs. This does not mean that the aged and the mentally or physically disabled are not entitled to the same share of society's wealth as other sound individuals. Well, yeah, we agree that they have a right but it says, you who are hungry and have no money, come by and eat. You who have no clothes, come by and eat. Well, you who are old and need it, come by and eat. Which means that you use your credit, you go negative, and you owe. And if you die in the negative, c'est la vie. We divvy it over the database. Not to worry. The wealth of a society may be likened to a provisions establishment or warehouse which supplies a number of people on a daily basis with a specific quantity of provisions to meet their daily needs. And I'm saying the guys who score more ought to be able to eat more. Unless it's people are starving next to them, then they should cut back a bit. But as long as the guy who scored little doesn't have too little, I ought to be able to pig out. So the egalitarianism that Muammar's offering socialism is just a little bit too egalitarian when you don't have to be. You just got to make sure that the guys with most don't have too much and the guys who got less don't have too little. And that's fair. But he who takes advantage of such talent to obtain for himself more than his share is undoubtedly a thief. Bull! I use my talent to grow more than the next guy. I am not a thief by keeping it. Why should he have exactly the same as me? And doesn't that kill incentive? Except for public servants who are assigned a specific share of society's wealth commensurate with their productivity. Well, that sounds like a wage with a wage scale for their time, finally. And the services they perform Yes, well-paid time. The difference between the shares of these public servants is determined by the extent of services performed and level of productivity. Yes, that's the way it should work. So why don't you call that a wage? Thus, human experiences have finally yielded a new experiment in a unique attempt to culminate man's struggle for complete freedom and happiness, fulfilling his needs, breaking free from the shackles of exploitation, bringing an end to tyranny, and finding the way to a just distribution of society's wealth. Yes, that's a just distribution, forced equality. But, like Paul said, you can allow he who gathered much to have not too much, and you can allow he who gathered little 
to have not too little. He who owns the house in which you live, the vehicle in which you ride, or the un income on which you live, either completely or partially controls your freedom. Freedom is undividable. Freedom is an essential prerequisite for achieving happiness. And to be free, a human being must personally own what he needs. The material needs of people that are first and foremost are clothing, food, home, and personal means of transportation. These are sacrosanct and must be privately owned. They are not to be leased from others. The aim of a socialist society is the happiness of man. This happiness cannot be realized except in conditions of spiritual and material freedom. However, the realization of freedom depends upon the extent to which man personally owns his essential needs and the extent to which such ownership is safeguarded. The intimidating power of trade unions in the capitalist world is potentially capable of transforming capitalist wage-earning societies into societies of partners, not until they get credit at the bank. Otherwise, it's only the owner who's got credit at the bank who can get the currency to fund the operation. But once everybody has access to their social credit at the bank, they can pool their credit buy out the owner and now it becomes a social enterprise. The final step in the process will be accomplished when the new socialist society reaches the stage whereby money and profit disappear. Well, you're never going to be able to get rid of the medium of exchange, money, because you need a medium of exchange to account for your resources and to maximize efficient production. Yeah, but you lose the incentive. Profit automatically disappears at this final stage and the need for money as a medium of exchange no longer exists. But the need for money as a medium of exchange to organize your labor does exist. The recognition of profit is an admission of exploitation. Not necessarily. Not if everybody gets to go out there and do their best to try and profit and score their most then it becomes a measure of excellence. Since the mere fact of recognition implies that the pursuit of profit knows no limits. Well, we're not saying Bill Gates, Rothschild type of pig people profits. We're just talking about maximizing your human potential. Domestic servants, ah, wages. Domestic servants, whether wage earners or otherwise, represent a condition of servitude. Well, yeah, but someone's got to serve people who can't do certain things for themselves. They are actually the slaves of our modern times. Well, yeah, because they're not paid well enough. They're not paid their fair share. And since the new socialist society is based on partnership and not on a wage system, the natural socialist rules do not apply to house servants. They offer services, not production. And services do not entail material production divisible into shares as natural socialist rules stipulate. This is why domestic servants cannot work except in return for a wage. Yeah, just make it a fair wage. Stop complaining about wages. And even without a wage, in unfortunate circumstances, yeah, slavery. But being of a level lower than the level of wage laborers, House servants are more deserving of emancipation from the fetters of servitude in a society of wage earners, the society of slaves. They're only slaves if they can't go anywhere else. And if they have their own credit lines, they can. So if they choose to serve this group or these people in this way for a wage, it is a decision, it is a bargain they agreed to to transform them as partners in domains where material production is divisible into shares. But it's not when you're taking care of a little old lady. Houses should be serviced by their occupants, not a little old lady who can't handle it all. And house chores should not be done by servants in return for wages or without wages, by, but by employed persons subject to promotion during their employment and enjoy material and social benefits just like other public servants. Right, well-paid wages. 